I'm so excited that you're here because in today's video, I have a Dollar Tree Halloween DIY that I promise you, you are not going to want to miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa, pregnant mama of three, and I love to do all things crafty on a budget, and I would love if you would become part of my crafty family. If you enjoy this content and you like what you see, definitely stick around, click that red subscribe button, tap the bell and all, that way you're notified when I upload. Hit that thumbs up for me because I have a big goal of getting to 100K by the time my baby boy is born in October and I can't do that without your help. So do all the youtube -y things, and let's not waste any time because you guys are gonna freak when you see this DIY. I'm so excited, let's hop right in. Okay friends, if you guys are ready for spooky season and Halloween DIYs, leave me a ghost down in the comments below. If you can't find a ghost, just say ghost, that's totally fine, I get the drift. So I start off for this project with this piece of foam board that I had in my stash. Y'all, I have had this piece of foam board since my back in the kitchen days. I used to stage with this piece of foam board. All I did was wrap it with a piece of contact paper and it was just in my scrap. So I figured why not use it? I started off by just marking the top and the bottom of how big I want my coffin. If you have not figured that out yet, this is what we're going to make. So I did eight inches at the top, eight inches at the bottom. Now, I wasn't really too sure how to make a perfect, a perfect, <laughs> a perfect coffin shape. So all I did was go to Google, type in coffin, and I, I got a general idea, and then I just marked it out as best as I could. Now, this is 20 by 20, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I can leave the measurements down in the description box below. But I just went in with my ruler and a pencil, and I had a uh, picture on Google popped up, like I said, and I just drew out the shape as best as possible. Once I was done with the first shape, then I realized that the bottom is way more narrow than the top is. So if your top is eight inches, then your bottom is going to be about six inches. And then the, also the bottom part of a coffin is a lot more slender than the top part is. So I did just make those adjustments and then I used my hot knife to go ahead and cut that out. Now, originally, I was going to make this about an inch and a half wide, and I don't know what told me that that was too big, so I cut it down to an inch, but please, you guys, if you recreate this project, which I hope you will because it really wasn't hard to do at all, then make sure that your shelves are a little bit bigger. I regret not making this a little bit wider because when I went to go make all the decor for the inside of it, I did have to limit myself to certain things just because some things that I wanted to use would not fit on my little shelves. So just keep that in mind, like I said, if you recreate this and tag me on Instagram so I can see it because I love seeing your guys' projects. So anyway, once I was done with the general shape, then I took that same scrap that I cut it out from and I just lean it up to the top part, cut that piece out, and then I just repeated that step all the way around my coffin, making sure to glue them after I cut them down. That way I know the next piece will fit perfectly. I get many questions about my hot knife. Now, I personally got this from Walmart, but I can leave a hot knife linked in my Amazon store that is either the exact same one that I have or one that is very comparable if I did not do that already. And you guys can always find my Amazon and all of my links linked down in the description box below. If you guys click the title of this video, a box will appear and that is the description box. I know not a lot of people know how to get to it, so I figured that I would just mention that really quick. Thank you. 
And as the old saying goes, measure twice, cut once. That way you don't have to continue to cut pieces. But once I was finished with the entire outside, then I just did the exact same thing for the shelves on the inside. Now, you can put the shelves wherever you like them. You can have little tiny shelves. You can make them a bit wider. It's totally up to you. I don't know where that footage went but all I did was just hold it up to where I wanted my shelves cut that down and then glued those down now to secure this make sure that this is nice and um, glued together and not going anywhere all I did was take my hot glue gun and just run some hot glue along all of the seams now if I did this over again and I might do another one because here you're going to see that I dry brushed, well not dry brushed, I gave this entire thing a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint and I actually like loved that wood grain in the background. I wish that I had painted my outer pieces first and then attached them just because I really really liked that wood grain and I'm kind of sad that I covered it. Let me know down in the comments. Do you guys like the distressed black look on this coffin better or do you think you like that wood grain in the background? I, I'm curious to know. But anyway, of course we need lights for this thing. So I took my Amazon lights. Um, they're little fairy lights. They came in a pack of 24 and I believe I got them for like a dollar a piece. Don't quote me on that, but I will also leave those linked in my Amazon shop. And I needed two strands for this. So I started off with that little embossing tool. I poked holes in every single corner of the shelves, top and bottom. That way we could string lights at the top and the bottom, obviously. And for the bottom shelves, I did kind of like swirlies. That way we had more lights at the bottom. And then at the top, I only did like one strand, if that makes sense. So if that makes no sense you can see what I'm doing here um, but you just want to weave your lights in and out um, and then you're going to glue the battery pack to the back which I did that first um, I poked my holes I stuck my lights through the back and then through the other side that way we could glue down the battery pack I knew that wasn't going anywhere and then I could freely work with the end of the lights once I was done with one of the lights, then I just glued down the edges and then I used, <laughs> then I used another pack of the, or, you know, strand of the lights and I did the exact same thing for the next three shelves. So what it covered was um, the bottom, the top, and then another shelf and then the next strand covered the bottom, the shelf, and then the top, if that makes sense. <laughs> I know that was a tongue twister, but anyway, moving on. To cover these lights up, all I took was some um, floral moss and some reindeer moss. I just felt that they needed to be covered, and I could have sworn, you guys, that when I was at Dollar Tree, I picked up some of those fake cobwebs, and I literally could not, <laughs> I could not find them anywhere, so I don't know what happened, but anyway, we had to cut, we had to cover up those lights one way or another, so I figured that these two would be the perfect combination, and there was no rhyme or reason or technique. I just laid down some hot glue and then went in with my moss wherever I saw fit. So this is the part where you get to be creative. You can use as little or as much as you would like. You can put different decorations in here. It's totally up to you, but I'm going to show you guys how I decorated mine. So I put a little skeleton in there from Dollar Tree. He is motion activated, so when you walk by him, his little eyes go on and he makes like a spooky sound so I glued him down and then I also took these white skulls from Dollar Tree and a skewer and I stuck four of those skulls down onto the skewer um, and I pointed them in different directions like so the bottom one went one way and then the next the other you could see what I did here so to make these stand out a little bit more, all I did was take a little paintbrush and my ink Waverly chalk paint and just kind of went in the eye sockets and the nose and the mouth 
to um, kind of highlight those features. And then I also took a little um, wooden circle and glued that to the bottom. That way this could stand up really easily. And then just to finish him off, all I did was take that same moss and just randomly glued some in between the skulls. And then I also took one of these little cupcake picks. They're so cute. They're little wooden bats. They're actually pretty good quality. I cut them off of the like toothpick part and then I just glued them on my little arrangement and that was it for this one you guys so quick and easy I absolutely love the way that it turned out it's so funny because I never used to make Halloween decor and it's because of you guys that I get super excited now I absolutely love making Halloween decor now For the next little decoration, I took one of these wooden plaques that I got from Dollar Tree and I lost the footage of me painting the one white and black. So there's two different ones. We're going to start off with the black one. I gave it a distressed coat of my Ink Waverly chalk paint and then I took that October 31st transfer um, that I had in my Chalk Couture stash from last year and transferred that on with my white chalk paste. I then took this new transfer, thanks for dropping in with the little spider and the webs, and I started by transferring on the spider kind of in between or in the middle of that October 31st, and then right at the top around the top of that circle, then I transferred on the spider webs, and look how cool this is. I absolutely love it, but we're going to take this a step further. Once that was dry, then I went in with my glow-in-the-dark chalk paste. Yes, you heard that right. Y'all, this chalk paste is so stinking cool. I'll leave y'all the link in the pinned comment and in the description box. Um, but anyway, it's so cool. So once that was dry, I went in with the exact same transfer. I didn't wash it or anything, um, but I went in with my glow-in-the-dark paste and just went over that. Last but not least, I went in with my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brushed all the way around the edges and look how cool this one is. I cannot wait to hear which decoration was your favorite down in the comments and here you can see how cool that glow in the dark paste is. For the white one, I could not wait to use these rub-on transfers. I recently just hauled these. If you guys did not see that haul, I will leave that linked in the cards in the right-hand corner for you. But I just r randomly picked like the little images in the rub-on transfer that I liked personally and I felt went together. So I picked out the little spider with the spider with the, yeah, the spider web. <laughs> The spider web, good lord help us, um, the spider web and like the moon and the ghost with the house. Now y'all, I messed up, I kind of layered these instead of doing one piece at a time and then lifting up the plastic, I thought I was going to be slick and quick. <laughs> I did not even mean to rhyme that. I thought I was going to be slick and quick and just kind of lay them all down and transfer them on. However, I don't recommend you do that because some of them did end up transferring on the plastic. So just keep that in mind. So once I was satisfied and I liked the image, then I went in once again with my mini chip brush and my ink Waverly chalk paint and dry brushed all the way around this one. Once that paint was dry, I did the exact same thing with my glow-in-the-dark paste. And literally, you guys, that was it to get such a high-end looking piece. I would pick this up out of a store to, you know, decorate with. So let me know what you guys think. And I would just encourage you guys, if you're scared to DIY, pick out a small, simple project like this one. Start off small and work your way up. Because if I can do it, I know you can do it as well. 
Moving on to the next little decor piece. Now, this is where imagination comes in. So I saw that these were little teeny gift boxes, and I knew that they would be perfect for like a tiered tray. So I ended up picking them up the other week, not even knowing that I was going to be doing this project. So when I found them in my stash, I knew that they would be perfect for a little decor piece. So I just assembled the box. Now this thing was a little tricky, but I just kind of folded over where I knew all the creases were. And then you want to start at the top and kind of join those pieces at the top and the bottom. And then you'll wrap that top piece around those join pieces at the top and the bottom. And then you're just going to kind of like push it all together and then attach it. Once the box is together, then I took this piece of wallpaper that I believe it's like peel and stick wallpaper from Dollar Tree. Now it is very thick and that's why I chose it because these gift boxes are kind of cheap and flimsy. So I wanted to sturdy it up a little bit. And I knew that if I use this paper, that it would probably make it a lot better. And it definitely, definitely did. So all I did was just cut out a kind of like a square um, from the wallpaper. And then I took the backing off and laid that down to the front of my little coffin. Next, I just went around and kind of cut little pieces. Now, this is kind of hard to explain. That is why I left the entire clip in here so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing because I can definitely show you better than I can tell you. Once my box was completely wrapped, then I went in once again, surprise, surprise, with my mini chip brush, my ink Waverly chalk paint, and I just dry brushed all the way around my little mini coffin, definitely leaving more of that wood grain shine through this time. Next, I went in with my rest my bones, or rest your bones, I should say, little mini transfer that I got last year. This is why I always tell you guys to grab transfers when you see that you like them because they do retire, but they are reusable so you can have them for years to come. So I transfer on the rest your bones with white, dry that once that was done. I went in with my glow in the dark paste and now comes the fun part to decorate. So I pulled these spiders from Dollar Tree. I glued one to the top of my little coffin and then I took some of that moss and just randomly glued some around to make it look like it had been growing or it had been there for a while and you know spooky like nobody had come and cut it in a long time. So I just randomly did that. You guys can um, again, be creative, do this to your liking. If you have a better idea, if your placement is better, then you go for it. It does not have to look exactly the same as mine. Last but not least, I took another one of those little um, bats from the cupcake picks and I glued that down to the bottom and I took some of my glow in the dark paste and I went on my little spider and on my little bat just to give those some dimension and that way they could glow as well in the dark. And look how cool that is you guys, like are you kidding me? Next, I had this little tiny jar that I got at a yard sale, and once again, I took this transfer that I got last year at Halloween, and I transferred on that caution sign with my yellow chalk paste. I pulled that back, not pulling the entire transfer off of my jar, because y'all know, probably, you probably guessed it, that I wanted to dry it and put some of my glow in the dark paste on there. Now, I should have dried this better. I was working on glass and I was working quickly. So the second layer did peel up a little bit, but I kind of felt that it just added to the spookiness of it. So it did not bother me, but if that type of thing bothers you, then definitely make sure that your paste is a lot more dry before you go in with your glow-in-the-dark layer. 
Next, all I did was take a little bit of water and like the tiniest, tiniest bit of this Arteza acrylic green paint and made some green water and then cut up some of the limbs from one of the skeletons from Dollar Tree, stuck that in there and then glued the cork in so that if it fell, the water wouldn't go anywhere. And look how cool that is, you guys. I love it so much. Okay friends, for the last little DIY, if you guys are still around, leave me a little spooky emoji and just say, hey, I'm still here with you. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, but anyway, I take one of the cats and I paint that with my silver acrylic paint. Next, I take this little broom from Dollar Tree and it was way too tall to fit in my shelves. So I just measured how big or smaller that I needed it, I should say. And I cut that down. And then I also cut off that little part that was holding it together. I did not like the way that it looked. So I just wrapped a little bit of jute around so that it would not unravel. And then I made a simple uh, buffalo check bow and I also glued that down to my broom. Next I dry brushed my little kitty with my ink Waverly chalk paint and to finish the kitty off all I did was take some gel stain and I just kind of made some rust spots. Now to make cobwebs on my project all I did was take two scrap stir sticks. I put a little bit of hot glue on one of the ends of my stir stick and then I just kind of like uh, mushed it together pulled it apart and when I pull it apart I just layer it on my project in different directions if that makes sense if that makes no sense you can see what I, what I just did um, and it gives the perfect cobwebs. Now to finish this off, all I did was take my glow in the dark chalk paste and I just randomly dry brushed some of that on some of the little details like the skulls, um, eyes and stuff like that. That way in the dark it glows and you guys, I am loving this project so much. When I first start my projects, I'm not really exactly sure like how they're going to turn out, what exactly they're going to look like. I just kind of work as I go. I take my time. I'm passionate about it. I love it. And I just appreciate that you guys love it just as much as I do. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments which part is your favorite like which little decor piece is your favorite. Also, if you guys need chalk tour info on how you can get all of the items for 40% off, text my number at 302-204-0881, which will be in the slide towards um, the end of the or at the end of the video, as well as in the pinned comment and in the description box. So you guys can definitely find it. Um, also, if you guys are not following me on TikTok and Instagram, I literally post daily content there. Um, I post reels. I'm on my stories. It's a lot more personal. You guys get to um, like hang out with me a little bit more. I go live, all that fun stuff. So follow me over there. Those links will also be in the description box and in the pinned comment as well. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe so that we can get to 100k by October. And here you go. If you guys need ketone info on how I recently just lost 60 pounds, text my number for ketone or for chalk info, text the word chalk. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing day. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You can literally do anything you set your mind to. Don't forget it. And I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.